The Control X Core web interface includes a data layer browser. This is a great tool for checking which data is available for each app and checking communication between apps and between the core and other devices. I'm going to show an example of how to create a watch list so that you can easily organize and return to data sets that are relevant to your application. For a general use case, let's say I want to monitor some data from the core itself. I'm going to go to Framework, Metrics, System, click on CPU Utilization Percentage. There's the live value. If I want to add it to the watch list, click up here. Then I'm going to grab Mem Used Percentage. And we'll add it to the watch list. And then I want to add the temperature of the core. That's in a different spot in the data layer. I have to go to System, Health, Temperature, Value, and we'll add that one. To open up the watch list, click up here. And those are the three items that I added. If you click on these links, it takes you right to that location in the data layer. So the watch list serves as a list of shortcuts as well as being a window where you can monitor values from different locations in one group. Sometimes you have to dig several layers deeper than what we just did to find what you're looking for, which makes the watch list all the more valuable. Now you may want multiple watch lists for different purposes. To manage the watch lists, we can go to data layer, watch lists. Here's the default watch list by the name watch list. And these are the items that I just added to it. Let's say I want to add a new one with a more meaningful name. So I click create. And I'll call this core data. So now I have watch list and I have core data. And I'm going to copy and paste this from watch list and I'll paste it into core data. And I'll just go ahead and clear out the one that's called watch list. So now those items are part of a watch list called Core Data. So if I go back to here, to open watch list, click here. You can choose which watch list you want to look at. So we'll pick Core Data. And there are the three items again. On a related note, if you navigate away from the data layer browser and then come back into it, you will see the root structure by default. But in the settings you can change this so that it brings you back to the last location you had navigated to. So let's say I was in motion. And I go back to the dashboard and then to data layer. It takes me right back where I was. Watch lists can also be used as a convenient way to integrate data from the data layer 
into the Control X PLC application. To do this, I right click on application, add data layer variables from Control X core watch lists. Here are the two watch lists that are available. This is the one that I just created, core data. And it lists the variables here. You can accept the name that it grabbed from the data layer, or you can change it here. For this one, I'm going to change it because the name of the node is not very descriptive. The items will be refreshed at an interval that's double of what you put in here for the task cycle time. So if I want to read these every 200 milliseconds, I'll put 100 in here. And then we pick whether we want to write to these objects from the PLC or read them from the data layer into the PLC. So I'm going to pick generate PLC objects for reading. And a global variable list is created, which contains those variables along with supporting code and a task that's going to execute function blocks from the data layer library in order to read these variables. But all that is in the background and does not have to be handled by the user. So let's go ahead and log in. Now we see the values in variables in the PLC. You'll notice that these status variables will alternate between DL OK and DL invalid value, and that's simply because these reads execute every other PLC scan. And in the intervening PLC scans, the execute of the data read function blocks is going low because a low to high transition is needed to trigger the read. So that's why you want to make the task interval twice as fast as the rate at which you want the variables to update. Here's what this looks like in a trace. In this case I'm reading the position of an axis that is constantly moving. We can see that we're getting new values every 200 milliseconds. So here's the time between cursors in the lower left. So every 200 milliseconds, you're getting a fresh value of position. And then the green signal is just the toggling of the status of the read operation. So anything in the data layer, whether it comes from a field bus app, OPC UA, device bridge, REST API, or any other method, as long as it's in the data layer, it can be pulled into the PLC project this way. And because it's global variables and not I.O., it doesn't count against the I.O. limit of your PLC license.